Today, we're going to be learning about transformations in the Cartesian plane. Before we begin, we must have a quick review of the quadrants and where they are located. Quadrant 1 is here, Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, and Quadrant 4. We need to know this because we're going to be moving specific points and shapes in and to different quadrants. So what does it mean when we say the word transformation? The word transformation is a general term referring to the four specific ways that we can manipulate a shape, as far as rotating on a point, moving it across a certain Cartesian plane, etc. Now before we explore the actual math behind transformations, I want to give you a general sense of what it looks like. So say we wanted to transform the shape. One way we can do it is like this. As simple as that. In this video, we're going to be going over three different types of transformations. The first is translations, the second is rotation, and the final has to do with reflections. So again, building that general sense of what this looks like, simply sliding or moving shapes. The first group of transformations in this video are translations. Translations are often referred to as sliding a figure across the Cartesian plane. In order to mathematically do this, we're going to have to be able to recognize ordered pairs such as in this square, we need to recognize that the ordered pair in the upper right vertex is labeled as 3-3. Three, three. Some other language that you usually come across when dealing with translations are the terms up, down, left, and right, which refers to in which direction we are moving the figure. Let's see how this can mathematically be done. Say we wanted to take the square and we wanted to move it over to the right 8 units. Our first step is to label every vertex of our polygon, in this case our square, and we want to write them as an ordered pair. So in this vertex we have negative 5, 5, negative 2, 5, negative 5, 2, and negative 2, 2. Now remember, we want to slide our figure to the right 8 units. How can we do this? If we add 8 to every single x coordinate, including the vertexes of our figure, that will translate our entire figure from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. So let's do that. The first vertex reduces down to 3, 5. And the rest reduce down to 6, 5, 3, 2, and 6, 2. Let's see if this matches up. We have successfully translated our figure over 8 units. Now we can use the same approach of adding and subtracting to our x coordinate as we can to our y coordinate. That is, we can move our figure up or down the same way we moved our figure left to right, but in this case we must add or subtract to every single y coordinate in the figure instead of the x. Lastly, for translating, you can do both. We can move a figure left or right, and then up or down, or vice versa. But the two may be combined. The next type of transformation this video will discuss is a reflection. That is, being able to take a shape or figure, which we call our pre-image, and being able to reflect it about a line, or our line of reflection, to get a new reflected figure also known as our image. To mathematically be able to reflect a pre-image across a line of reflection, we must think in terms of distance. That is, how far away from the line of reflection is every single point of my pre-image? So let's take the very bottom point of this moon, for example. How far away is that bottom point from this line of reflection? And then we want to take that distance and apply it across the line of reflection to then get our image, or for that point anyway. And theoretically, if we were to do this for every single point in our pre-image, we would then get our image. Now because our line of reflection is y equals x, we actually don't have to use the distance formula in this case. It actually works out nicely. So in this example, we're going to reflect about the origin 0, 0, which is on the line of reflection y equals x. 
So we want to notice that the bottom point of our pre-imaged moon is exactly two units to the left of the point zero zero and one unit above the point zero zero. Now we're going to reflect this so instead of being two units to the left we know our image is going to be two units to the right and instead of being one up from the origin zero zero we know that our image is going to be one down from the origin zero zero. Now again if we do this for every single point of our pre-image we will then get our image. But most of the times you just have to do it for the vertex and you'll be able to connect the dots. The final transformation this video is going to go over are rotations. That is being able to rotate an object and how do you do so mathematically? There are four general degree measurements of rotations. You have the 90 degree rotation, the 180 degree rotation, the 270 degree rotation, and finally you have the 360 degree rotation. We're now going to explore how you can rotate a pre-image mathematically. Let's take this triangle for example. Let's try to rotate this triangle 90 degrees about the origin or the point zero zero. Now remember when we rotate we always move the figure counterclockwise. So the way we do this is very similar to our translation. We want to label every single point of our figure. In this case we want to just use the vertices and we want to apply some sort of function. In this case for rotations the trick for the 90 degree rotation is to have every single coordinate pair flip the x and y value and make the y value negative. So first things first we want to label the vertices. Let's use vertice negative 4 5 for example. We want to switch the position of the y and x coordinate and then we want to make the y value negative. So negative 4 5 now becomes negative 5 negative 4. Let's do this for the other two remaining vertices of our triangle to where we can now see a general shape taking place. We then want to connect the dots and we now have successfully rotated our figure 90 degrees about the origin. Now if you remember I said there's a special trick for 90 degrees. This is the special trick for the other angle rotations. I hope this video about transformations in the Cartesian plane helped you. If it did, please leave a like. If you have any questions, please comment below. And for future videos, please subscribe. Thank you.